hello 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 hi guys good morning welcome back to a new video key hal chal i hope you guys are doing good in this we're gonna see a problem find minimum cost to remove array elements now problem number two is already live problem number three is this one four will be coming soon now in this we are simply saying again uh, before this i highly recommend that at least you must have done couple of starting problems from the practice playlist of again boiler uh, spoiler alert db now let's start off it simply says that you have to remove all the elements that's the final task uh, until the array becomes empty what is the process process is any two elements can be chosen out of the first three elements and remove them the cost associated with the removal of these two elements will be the maximum out of these two out of these three so in the very beginning you have three elements you can remove any two you can remove any two so if i have a1 a2 a3 i can remove either a1 a2 or i can remove a1 a3 or i can remove a2 a3 right and the cost will be the maximum of either a1 a2 or a1 a3 or a2 a3 that's the cost which i will take and there is also one more condition if there are fewer than three elements which is obviously it means that if i have either two or one element remaining in nums then i have to remove all of the remaining element in a single operation now if i just club both this condition the first condition says about removing two elements right but it chooses three elements so obviously i am choosing three elements but now the problem is saying even if you have two elements remaining in the very end for example if i have an array and it has just two elements remaining in the very end then obviously i can take the maximum of both of them and add it to my answer or even if i have just one element remaining in the end then also i can take that element and add it to my answer answer as in cost and that's going to be my answer i have to return what is the minimum cost i can achieve just so that i can remove all the elements now as i was mentioning that this second condition indirectly or directly emphasize primarily on one case which is when you have remaining either two or one element in a general case you will be only stuck with the one element what i mean by that is that if i have let's say four elements obviously in the very beginning i will choose three but technically i will remove two elements again i am right now removing the first two but i told you that you, you can remove literally any of them that's the main main thing and then ultimately i will be re remaining with the remaining last two elements and thus this second case will come up for these last two but even if i imagine it as you know remaining two elements i will just take the maximum and that's another operation so one operation this one another operation this one again technically for the first for the first operation i choose these three elements then remove and then for the last operation i chose this one same way same way for this example when the elements are odd i can have first operation for these three elements let's say i remove these two then next operation i will still choose these three elements let's say i remove these two then last operation only this one so last operation can be either two elements remaining or one element remaining that's my last operation cool again this will help in the end that's the reason i just primarily focused on you know this case which they have written now as they were mentioning you know you have these three possibilities do you remember something whenever you have to try for all the possibilities what you do usually you must have solved the question where you are given something and you have two possibilities and then you you used to solve that but now i am saying i have three possibilities do you remember something does something strike obviously yes if you would have solved dp here then you must have seen this is exactly what dp is dp says simply bro try for a recursion try for both the possibilities in this case i have three possibilities and ultimately i will memorize it and get my answer now if you are in a very beginning stage of dp i will highly highly recommend please come on to the practice problem sheet and start practicing dp again the way i teach dp is very different from the others so make sure that you are comfortable with the actual crux of dp which again you you can learn while i am teaching you for the basic problems again i will not teach very basic of dp in this problem because again uh here i am expecting that you know at least the basic recursion and the basic dp itself now coming on we'll do the same thing what the same thing same thing is okay just try to remove two elements which means i showed you i have three options right i showed you i have three options now to remove three elements i told that i will have to choose three i will have to choose the starting three numbers now uh, you could have asked aryan you could have chosen idx idx plus 1 and idx plus 2 then why you have uh, 
choose an IDX, ID is minus one or ID is plus one, you will see it in a while. But again, you can choose literally anything. You can choose IDX, IDX plus one and IDX plus two. Now, why I choose these? Because I know I have to choose any two of them from the starting ones. So only when I'm starting three elements, I can choose any two of them. That is, I need their corresponding indexes. But the moment, the moment you will think, okay, Aryan, uh, although you were saying that it is a DP, so why can't I use ID1, ID2 and ID3? If you will choose that, then you will have to memoize that part as well, which means your DP state will be ID1, ID2 and ID3. And thus it will be O of n cube time. And if I go and look at the constraints, constraints, sorry, constraints says it is only O of n square possible because n is 1000. Only 1 is 6. 1 is 9 will give you TLE. So I cannot go O of n cube. That is not possible. I can go O of n square or maybe O of n square log n in worst case. Cool. Let's see. And let's see what is required and how we can proceed ahead. So let's take the first case. Out of, you know, starting three elements, let's say I chose the starting two ones, you know, A1 or A2, which means in my cost, I will add their maximum. Again, I'm just, you know, time for all the possibilities. In the cost, I will add their maximum and then I will try for the further portion. I will show you what the further portion is, but this is first case. Second case is I can try for A2, A3 and then I will try for the further portion. What is the further portion? Further portion is this array and this array is the further portion. Okay. Other cases, I will try for A1, A3, and then I will try for the further portion, which is this one. Now, when I set the further portion, what I mean? I mean that remaining, remaining, whatever is remaining, just imagine now you have to proceed ahead with that, which means in my cost, I will add maximum of A1, A2. So in my cost, I will have to add maximum of A1, A2. But then also go and solve next. What is next? Next, obviously, I will have to get these three indexes. If you remember in the very beginning, you have these three indexes. Now for the next three locations, I will have these three locations. So it will be prev IDX, IDX plus two, and then IDX plus three. Or I should say, again, when you say prev IDX, you might say, Aryan, what is prev IDX? Again, why I am saying prev IDX? Because here, the actual previous index changed. Again, this is relational as in, you know, IDX, if it is IDX, if this you assume as IDX, then this is IDX plus one. But technically you might say, okay, Aryan, still it is IDX minus one. Isn't it same? Yes, it is. Yes, it is same. So now what? Uh, do we even need prev index? I'll say maybe not. Let's see. Okay, let's see. Next example. For that, if I take these two, which means in my cost, I will add maximum of a2 comma a3 and then go and solve go and solve for what remaining ones what is the remaining one obviously this index this index and this index again did you see now why we were taking prev index let's see okay even if you still didn't get the hint let's continue uh so here i took this thing idx plus 3 which ultimately says that uh, again still you can see the relation it is idx and it is IDX plus one, but still this one is something special. It is no more. It is existingly the IDX minus one. It is IDX minus one, right? Technically it is IDX minus one. It is IDX plus two. And next one is just plus one of previous one, which is plus two. Okay. Let's again proceed with the last example. When we choose A1, A3. Okay. Then what? A1, A3 being chosen. So in my answer, I will add maximum of A1, A3 and then go and solve for prev index idx plus 2 idx plus 3 prev index idx plus 2 idx plus 3 so did you see a very standard pattern here i'll show you all three simultaneously prev index you might say okay Aryan, i will take a3 as in you know idx plus 1 but here the prev index is idx minus 1 here the prev index is idx minus 1 sorry uh, here the prev index is idx so prev index literally can be anything that is the reason i have to take previous index specially now do you do you see one more thing idx plus two next one is just plus one of it idx plus two next one is plus one of it idx plus two next one is plus one of it do you see any one very amazing thing yes so technically if you would have used this as a solve function it would have given you o of n cube as a time but obviously i don't need that because i realized i don't I, I need IDX, I need only the previous index because this is changing. This is I am going at. 
I can automatically find the next one. It will be always the IDX and then adding a plus one to it. So this is not required because this can be easily derived from IDX. So ultimately, my only required indexes or you know, required indexes will be previous index and IDX itself. Now, let's see how do we write a simple recursive. Again, logic you understood. The simple logic says that again, let's say I will have a simple solve function now and that solve function will say I will have a previous index and then the current index and I don't know, I don't need the next index. That's not required in this case. Now, obviously, uh, you have to return what? Minimum cost, which is the integer value. Now, base case, we'll go on to it, go on to it later on. So, the here will be base case. Here will be a simple, uh, you know, memo case. Memo case simply says that uh, if your DP of uh, like, you know, IDX and prev IDX, prev IDX, if it's not equal to minus one, then simply return. Uh, this is bracket, yes. Then simply return your dp of idx comma prev idx this is simply and again because i know i'm using two indexes thus my dp will be o of n square and that will work that also i know that now comes the main part i told you i have three options option one will say take the maximum of two values and then solve for the next one next one let's see what let's take go back let's say if i go back taking the first case again you see that we have three cases i'll take the first case which said taking maximum of prev index and idx so i will take let's say come on back i will take maximum of prev index which means nums of prev index so this will be nums of prev index and then this will be nums of idx and then nums of idx and then going and solving for what you know future indexes which is idx plus one and idx plus two so as you can come on back next index will be idx plus one as the new prev index and idx plus two plus two as the new index cool let's proceed okay this is first option second option as i mentioned could be you know second case which we have what is the second case second case is a2 a3 which is idx or idx plus one so let's choose that idx and idx plus one so now i will choose maximum of these two values plus solve things here here it will be maxim nums of nums of idx and nums of idx plus one idx plus one and then solving for what solving for as you can see here if i go back solving for prev index will remain as is which is the prev index itself and then the next index which is idx will become idx plus two so here it will become this will be prev index itself, prev index, and this will be idx plus two. Now, last one, again, last one, I quickly write it. Uh, although you can just simply say that maximum of two values and then solving for the remaining portion of the array. Now in this two values, obviously will be nums of prev index or uh, other one will be nums of idx plus one. And obviously here I can start off my prev index with the idx and next one will be idx plus one. It will be idx plus, not plus one, plus two. Because obviously plus one is already occupied here. And this we can add idx. Now these, these three options were there, but ultimately do you remember the aim of the maksad? Maksad was to get the minimum cost. Okay. So these are the, all the operations, which kind of will give me the cost. Operation one, operation two, operation through, operation three. I can just simply take the minimum cost, which is the minimum cost of operation one, operation two, or operation three, and make sure that thing should be memoized. So I can simply return that before returning, memoizing that by IDX and prev IDX. Memoizing that and simply returning it. Now coming on to the base case, as we are waiting since very long. Base case, as I mentioned, this will help me in figuring out the base case. What? These two conditions. If it is one element remaining, then simply add that. If it is two remaining, then simply add the maximum of these two. Cool. Obviously, if, if there are three, then I can proceed with the recursion itself. So the simple base case, if my IDX has reached N minus one, or I, sh I should say IDX has reached N, which means you have exhausted the entire size, then you can return your uh, nums of prev index, you know, nums of prev index, because prev index will be then pointing to the last element. But if my, you know, IDX is equals to N minus one, which ultimately means that I have now two elements. 
Now in that case, just simply return the maximum of prev and index. So I can return the maximum of uh, maximum of nums of prev index, prev index, and my nums of index. Last two elements taking the maximum for them, and ultimately um, the simple memo will be here, and the simple recursive case will be this one. And this is the simple return. And that's your final literal answer. Cool. Let's see the code. It's exactly the same as what we saw. I'll just show you the glimpse of code, the link in description. And also the article will come up on the website. You will be very happy with all the languages code. Again, all languages code will be available there. Cool. I hope you guys got it. Again, if you are very, if you are not good at recursion, no matter what from where you have studied, my way of teaching DP is very different than others. I uh, always try to make sure that, you know, if it is required bottom up, I, I teach bottom up. If it is required top down, I teach top down. If it is required, then how you migrate from top down to bottom up, that's also very different of how I do it. I don't make that matrices and stuff. I else, I actually try to help you how to build bottom up from top down itself. Cool, again, uh, it's a bit different uh, than others. You might see graph and all that topic will be same that how others teach, but DP is something which is different. So if you want, you can just try different lectures. And again, let me know if you have any doubts. Bye-bye, take care.